All right. Hi there, everybody. Thank you. And thank you all so much for being here and for coming to our first episode of Office Hours. Uh, we're so glad that you could be here today. Uh, my name is Stephanie, and I'm one of the customer delight specialists here at Posit Science. Uh, so our goal for the new Office webinar series uh, is to show off a specific feature or two, and then we will open the floor and answer any questions that you might have about those features. Now, this is going to be a little uh, less formal and a little more relaxed than our Brain Academy webinars, and we are planning on hosting these Office Hours webinars every other month this year. Today's topic is going to be about how to set up your schedule and training goals for Brain HQ. So Henry will be presenting for somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes, and then we will pivot to taking questions from the audience. If at any point you have a question that you'd like to ask, uh, go ahead and click the little Q&A button uh, in the Zoom control panel and a new window should pop up. You can type in your questions there and then we'll do our best to answer as many of those questions as we can. Uh, there are a lot more of you in the audience than we expected today, which is phenomenal. Uh, but that means that we likely won't be able to answer every question today. Good news, though, uh, you can always send follow up questions to support at brainhq.com. That's our email address. And we also do have a support site at support.brainhq.com uh, that will have answers to common questions. Uh, Henry will also be showing this off a little bit later during the presentation. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to note is that today's webinar is being recorded. Uh, and it will get posted to our YouTube channel in the coming days. If you'd like to be notified when the video goes live, uh, you can go to youtube.com slash brainhq and subscribe, and then you should receive a notification when that video goes up. You can also email us at support at brainhq.com uh, if you'd prefer that we send you a link to that video instead once it is live. All right, uh, so I think that covers the housekeeping. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce Henry, uh, our presenter today. Uh, so you've probably seen him before, but Dr. Henry Monka uh, is our CEO here at Posit Science. Uh, he earned his PhD in neuroscience at the University of California, San Francisco, and that's where he studied brain plasticity with our co-founder, Dr. Michael Mersnick. Uh, Henry, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for that uh, very kind introduction, and uh, I'm delighted to kick off our first edition of Office Hours here. All right. Sounds good. Go ahead and take it away when you're ready. All right. You can tell me if I can get my screen sharing here to work correctly. So should be like that. And can you see my slides? Aha, uh -huh, we can. All right. Fantastic. So, um, well, hey, thanks everyone for coming. As uh, Stephanie said, this is the inaugural webinar in our Office Hour series. I'm really happy that you've all joined for this first event. Um, as Stephanie said also, I'm going to talk for about, I hope, about 15 minutes of our hour talking about some key concepts in Brain HQ. And one of the most important ones and what we'll be covering today is, hey, what should your training goals be and how should you set up a schedule to achieve those goals? Uh, and I'm going to talk about two kinds of goals. I'm going to talk about a goal about how much should you use Brain HQ? Like how often should you train and how long should each training session be? And I'm also going to talk about goals around Brain HQ performance. Like what should your goals be around how well you want to perform on these exercises and how can you work towards those goals? We'll talk about how to build a schedule that's right from you and how to set reminders so that you can achieve the schedule. And then we're going to wrap up with some stretch goals that you can set for yourself if you're so inclined. So let's start here. How much should I train and how often? Well, let's start by thinking about physical exercise. You know, if you haven't been getting any physical exercise, well, the first step is kind of getting up off the couch and getting used to walking around your neighborhood. And after that, you might work your way up to your doctor's recommendation of getting three exercise sessions per week, maybe 20 or 30 minutes each. And then if you want to go beyond that after that, of course, many people do and start really regular habits of running or swimming or walking or weightlifting or what have you. You know, brain exercise with Brain HQ is pretty much exactly the same as that. You know, what we recommend is if you're first getting started and just learning the exercise and seeing if it's for you, you know, train each day so you get the hang of it, but just try to learn one new exercise per day and just train for five or 10 minutes. Now, if you're on this webinar today, you're probably past that point. You've probably used Brain HQ some already, but if you have a friend who's thinking about Brain HQ, well, we're releasing an update very soon that will help the personal trainer do this automatically for people. You know, next, once you're getting rolling with Brain HQ, what we recommend is that people train for about three days per week for about 30 minutes per day, about 90 minutes per week total. And then if you'd like to build on that in the same way people do in physical exercise, you know, people start training uh, three to five days a week, sometimes even every day, and for sessions that are 30 to 60 minutes per day. 
Now, I want to mention two other things. I'm going to talk about each of this in more detail, but I want to mention two other things as we just start to talk here, which is that it's a good idea to train several days a week. And that's because sleep is important for brain plasticity. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. And I also want to say that it's okay to train for a while, a few weeks or a few months, and then take a break for a little while as well, and then get back to training. I'll talk more about that too. So where do these recommendations come from? Well, just like about everything we do at Posit Science, these recommendations come from the published science of brain training studies. So if we look at these scientific studies, we see studies where people train twice a week for an hour per session. We see studies where people train three times a week for 30 minutes a session, four times a week for 40 minutes a session, sometimes even five times a week for 60 minutes a session. That's a lot. But what you can learn from that, or what we learn from that, is that, well, again, what matters is the total amount that you do per week and that you break it up into at least two sessions per week. Um, you know, again, some people might train twice a week, some people might train five times a week. What's important is you get those total minutes of brain training in. And what that tells us is that there's no magic perfect answer for everyone. I'm, I'm not here to tell you on this webinar, everyone has to train exactly three times a week, 30 minutes per day. I'm trying to say, that you should aim for that total amount of training and then break it into a number of sessions that works for your schedule. Now, why do we talk about training several times a week? Well, let's go through an example. Let's say you train like Brain HQ like this person. You're on your iPad, maybe you're relaxing in an easy chair. It looks very nice. That night you go to sleep. The next day comes and you, know, you train again. Maybe you're leaning back again, very relaxing. You go to sleep and so forth and so on. You train on your laptop, you train on your phone, you sleep between each time. What's happening in your brain? Well, during the daytime, when you're using Brain HQ, Brain HQ is driving these initial learning and it's driving that initial brain change, that initial brain plasticity in your brain. But each night while you sleep, sleep actually consolidates learning into lasting brain change. Put another way, you're not going to get the benefits of Brain HQ training unless you sleep each night. And that's why we don't tell people, hey, train for two hours just on Monday and that'll be enough. You really need that regular training broken up by a regular good night's sleep to drive sustained long lasting changes in your brain. Next thing people often ask is, well, can I take a break from this? And then, you know, or do I just have to do it every single day for the rest of my life? And the answer is, it's absolutely fine to take a break from training from time to time. Again, think about like physical exercise. Almost everyone has periods where they exercise regularly and then something comes up and we take a break from exercise for a few weeks. And then eventually we get back to our good habits. Brain HQ is the same way, you know, because Brain HQ drives long-term changes in the brain, especially as you sleep between sessions, you know, the benefits of Brain Brain HQ don't immediately disappear if you take a few weeks off, but you should get back to Brain HQ after your break because the benefits will eventually wear off and you want to keep your brain strong and resilient. And we see just about every pattern in our Brain HQ users. Now, here's an example of just an absolute impressive performance. This person, if you is training almost every day, you may recognize this calendar view from the progress view in Brain HQ, and each row represents a day of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and each square represents a day trained. This person is training a lot, fantastic. Not everyone is gonna achieve that goal. Like I said, a couple of days a week is good. But here's another person and they're training, you know, pretty regularly throughout the months. And then, you know, something comes up, maybe they have family in town, uh, maybe they, um, you know, are picking up a new hobby, they get distracted, they have some commitments to their friends, they take a break for a little while. That's completely fine. You see this person then gets back on the wagon, back on the horse and keeps brain training to keep going. And that's a completely fine way to think about using Brain HQ. And in fact, if we look at our real world data, if we look across the millions of people using Brain HQ, we see that this is very much how people are using Brain HQ in the real world. You know, a typical active user is training two or three times a week. Each time that person trains, they're typically training 20 or 30 minutes per session. Um, and, you know, when we look at our uh, usage patterns, we see that after a person starts training, you know, two months later, two thirds of people are still actively training. Even, uh, uh, even a year later, we see that half of people are still active in training. And of course, all that training adds up. Key studies show that just 10 to 18 hours of training really over a long time can drive wonderful brain health benefits. So with that overview, I'm gonna stop my slides and I'm gonna swap to something uh, directly more interesting and relevant. And I just want to show you how to accomplish setting goals and tracking your goals in Brain HQ. 
So Stephanie, I'm swapping to my uh, Brain HQ window now, and um, let me know that you can see that. Uh, I can confirm we can now see the Brain HQ window. Fantastic. So when you log into Brain HQ, you're typically going to see something like this. We call this the Brain HQ dashboard. Uh, and I'll go through each of these little pieces here. Uh, but where I want to start is talking about setting a usage goal for Brain HQ. How much should we aim to train? Uh, and by default, when you start Brain HQ, uh, it assumes you want to train about 90 minutes per week, three times per week. And you can confirm that by going to your profile. So click up here under your name and you can click on your profile. You'll see mine. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see your weekly goal. And uh, you'll see that my weekly goal is to train for 36 levels per week, which is about an hour and a half per week. Now, the first question you might ask is, hey, what's all this levels? I thought we were talking about training about an hour and a half or 90 minutes a week. Well, Brain HQ thinks about your goal in terms of level. And the reason is this. Uh, you know, a long time ago when we got Brain HQ going, we tracked the amount of minutes someone trained. But we found out that in a half an hour, one person might train 10 levels and one person might only train two levels. Now, they're both working hard. That's fine. But what matters is not how many minutes you sit in front of the computer. What matters is how many brain training levels you complete. So now Brain HQ asks you to train a certain number of levels per week and then gives you a guess about how much time that's likely to take. And you can set your goal by clicking here where it says change goal. Again, you see my goal is 36 levels per week. Brain HQ thinks that'll take about an hour and a half. And it thinks I'm going to train about 30 minutes in each session, three sessions per week. And if I'm feeling like, you know what, I want to train more intensively, I can just click this plus button and increase my training goal. Or if I feel like, you know what, I want to take it easier for a couple of weeks, I can click that minus and uh, shrink my goal down. So wherever you want to land, think about how much time you want to devote to brain training a week and pick a goal for a number of levels that equals that amount of time and set it. Now, what does that do in Brain HQ? Well, two things. First of all, if we go back to the dashboard, one place you'll see that show up is in these progress tiles. Now, these are a new feature. If you've trained in Brain HQ over the past few months, you might have noticed them. I'm going to talk about several of them later on in our talk, but right now I want to focus on the progress tile here on the right, which tracks how many levels I've completed. And what it shows is that I've done one level today. I did it right before the webinar just to get ready. And it also tells me how many levels I've completed this week. You can see I've done 13 levels of brain training this week and my goal is 36. So this is a great way to keep an eye on your goal. And each time you log into Brain HQ, you can check and see, hey, am I closing my circle here? Am I finishing all the levels that I've set for myself as a goal? The second place your levels per week goal shows up is in the personal trainer. So I'm gonna click on this big yellow button. As you may know, as a Brain HQ user, this is gonna take me to the personal trainer. And when it does that, Brain HQ actually picks out the exercises for me. So for example, today it wants me to start with target tracker and attention exercise. Then it wants me to do a new level of optic flow, the seventh level, I've never done that before. Uh, and then it, sometimes it wants me to repeat a level. Here's a level of recognition, which is a, a, a face training exercise that Brain HQ thinks, you know, Henry, I wanna bring you back to that and have you work a little harder. What I wanna draw your attention to is in this big circle here, you see that there's just a little tiny bit that's dark gray. And what that indicates is that I haven't completed any levels in the personal trainer yet. But as I use the personal trainer, this ring is going to fill up to show me how far I've gone in each day's goal for my personal trainer. And to show you that, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint slides because I'm not going to do a full personal trainer session with you right here on the fine. And let's take a look at what happens. Uh, Stephanie, with some luck, you can see my PowerPoint slides again. Uh, yep, just loaded in. Great. So as I mentioned, if we start the personal trainer, just a little bit of gray is here. That means I haven't done any of my levels yet. After I've done a first level, when I finish it, you'll see that this ring gets more full. That indicates I've got partway towards my goal in the personal trainer. And after I finish each exercise, that dark gray is going to fill in around and around. Here I'm halfway done. And then when I finished all the levels for the day, you'll see that that's completely full now. And in fact, my session will be done. The personal trainer will wrap up and give me the various achievements and rewards that I've earned. Now, that's a wonderful way to keep track just of, um, you know, exactly, uh, exactly where you are in a day's session. 
And so you might ask them to say, okay, well, if I've signed up for, let's say, 36 levels per week, you know, how many levels is the personal trainer going to give me each day? And the answer is the personal trainer assumes you're going to train about three times a week. So if you've signed up for 36 levels a week, you're going to fill up this whole circle in a personal trainer session when you've done a third of that or about 12 levels per session. So again, those are two great tools to both set a goal for how much you want to train per week and then track it each time you come in and use the personal trainer. But some people have a second kind of goal they want to achieve, and I want to talk for a moment about that, and that's a performance goal. What if you have a goal around how good you want to get at an exercise? Well, again, BrainHQ's got some helpful tools here, and I'm going to click on the Explore All Exercises button. Again, as you probably know, that lets me see all the exercises in attention and brain speed and memory and people skills and intelligence and even navigation. I'm going to pick one of them just to demo for you today. We'll click the Visual Sweeps exercise. The screen tells me a little bit about visual sweeps. We're just going to click the arrow and get on through this to actually look at my performance and my goals in visual sweeps. Now, if you've done the visual sweeps exercise, you might remember these little patterns that grow or shrink that you have to respond to. And sometimes they're red and green, and sometimes they have fat bars, sometimes they have skinny bars. If you haven't done this exercise, don't worry. We're just using it as an example today. Now, on this screen, each of these squares represents a different level of visual sweeps. This one might be red, this one might be green, this one might be fat bars, this one might be skinny bars, and so forth. And you can see in each level the maximum number of stars I've earned. And I've done pretty well on this first group of levels, which is called a stage. What I want to draw your attention to is this icon here. This is a gold medal, and that indicates that I've done all of the levels in this stage, and I've earned on the average four or five stars across them. And you can look and see I have a gold medal on stage one and a gold medal on stage two and a gold medal on stage three. I've been working hard. But when we get to stage four, I have a silver medal. That means I've earned three or four stars on most of these levels. And when we get to stage five, well, I don't have any medal at all. And that's because I haven't started all of these levels yet. You can use these medals to set and then achieve your own performance goals. For example, if you were in my situation, you might say, hey, my goal is to turn this silver medal into a gold medal. I only have to earn one more star across all these levels to get to a gold medal. And this one might be a good one, right? I've only earned three stars here in my performance. Maybe if I worked a little bit harder, I could get my fourth star and turn this into a goal, a gold. So again, that's a way you can set a performance goal for yourself and track your achievement to it. But another approach you might take is to say, you know what, I actually want to get a bronze medal in each of these stages because I haven't even done these levels. And I'm just going to work on each of these levels until I earn that bronze medal. And that's a great way to set and track a performance goal as well. Now, what goals should you personally shoot, shoot for? Well, again, that's going to be up to you and your brain. Now, remember, we have all kinds of people doing Brain HQ. We have pro athletes using Brain HQ. We have elite military units and U.S. Special Forces doing Brain HQ. Those are people who really want to shoot for five stars on every single level because they're top performers. What I generally recommend that ordinary people do if you're not a pro athlete and you're not in the United States Special Forces is that you aim to get a bronze medal in each of these stages and try out these levels. And then as you gain confidence and as you feel like you can sharpen yourself, start to aim for a silver medal in the earlier ones and work your way up. That's a wonderful way to use Brain HQ and track your performance as well. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, well, what are tools that can help us achieve those goals each week? And the main one is setting reminders. And you can set a reminder by going here and clicking on reminders. That will take you to your profile, and you can simply click add a reminder. And when you do that, BrainHQ gives you a helpful little interface and asks you, well, what days do you want a reminder on? So when you think about setting up a schedule for yourself, think about what you're doing during the week. And the most important thing is to pick some consistent times to do your brain training. If you're consistent, you'll achieve your goal. If you don't have a plan, you almost certainly won't. So for example, I might want to train on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I click to highlight those. And I don't want an alarm at 8 a.m. and then 1 a.m. in the morning. That's too early. But I do want to get started and do my brain training first thing. So I'll say 9 a.m. And then you can choose to get your reminder either by email or text. And when you submit that, well, it's all configured. Brain HQ will start sending you reminders. And when you get those reminders, you'll know it's time to train your brain. And when you do so, you're going to achieve all those goals that we laid out. So the last piece I want to show you, and then we'll move to questions. It's just some kind of fun goals, some stretch goals you might add on if you're in the mood. And they involve these progress tiles here. The first thing I want to call out is this one that says moments. 
and moments gives you the special achievements you've earned in Brain HQ. And if I click on this, you'll see that one thing that moments can show me is my streak. I've earned my third day streak. That means I've trained on Brain HQ three days in a row. Each day you train in a row, that streak is going to extend. And you don't have to do a whole personal trainer session. You can just come in and do a single level in a single exercise that you like to build your streak. And that's a wonderful stretch goal to see if you can get a three day streak, a five day streak, a 10 day streak. I don't know, maybe a hundred day streak. I look forward to seeing what we can all achieve. The other fun stretch goal is about every other week in the email that Brain HQ sends you on Sunday, you get a challenge. And that's shown up here. Now, the challenge this week is to do all the exercises in the attention suite. And there are about five of them, things like target tracker and double decision. As you can see, I've done one of them so far towards my goal of five. You don't have to do every level in the exercise, just do a single level. And when you finish up that challenge, you'll get an achievement as well. So again, that's a fun stretch goal. When Brain HQ gives me these weekly challenges, can I train enough in interesting ways to achieve those goals? So I'll wrap up there. We're about to take questions, and I will just uh, sum up by saying... Um, uh, hey, there's a couple things we've talked about. We've talked about setting usage goals, how much you want to train per week by going to your profile and setting that goal. We've talked about setting performance goals by going into the individual exercises and aiming for a bronze medal or a silver medal or even a gold medal. Uh, and we've talked about these uh, special goals, things like streaks and challenges. These are all great ways to, um, uh, to go about um, uh, setting and achieving goals. And if you want more help with that, you can always click on our wonderful help section here. And when you do that, you'll be taken to our help section. And there are a couple of articles you can look at. In the training section, for example, you can read articles about how much should I train or how do I set goals and reminders. And then also there are some great articles over here in the progress section where you can read about the progress tiles that I just mentioned. And you can read about um, you know, how to track how many levels you've completed and so forth. So great ways to learn more. Uh, and with that, uh, Stephanie, I think I'll wrap up and uh, we can probably move to some questions. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, great presentation so far, Henry. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was very kind of you. Um, all right. So I know we kind of touched on this, but can we get a um, quick version of this answer? Uh, is it better to train in fewer sessions per week, but then have each of the sessions be longer? Or is it better to do shorter sessions more frequently? You know, that is a great question. And um, you know what, I'll, uh, I could say a couple things about this. It depends on how short the sessions are. You know, if your sessions are getting down to like just two or three or five minutes, um, you know, that's, that's not a lot of brain training to really drive change. Um, and so, you know, we'd like to see sessions that are a little longer than that. You know, that being said, you know, we've seen great results from people who are training 30 or 40 or 45 minutes three times a week or people who are spreading it out into every day. So uh, from a science perspective, I think it's just that total amount of brain training done over the course of the week. And what I would look to the you know, person asking the question is, is to say, well, think about yourself and the kind of person you are and which is a schedule you're more likely to stick to. I absolutely talk to people where the best schedule for them is, hey, I just need to do it every day because as soon as I miss one day, you know, I'm kind of off the wagon. The hardest thing is to restart. So I'd rather just do it 15 or 20 minutes each day. That's fantastic. But I also talk to people who rather have a little daily rhythm, a weekly rhythm, right? They really want to know that Monday is a brain training day and Tuesday is not a brain training day and they alternate like that. And again, for those people, they should do somewhat longer sessions, right? 30 or 40 minutes to really get those minutes in. Uh, but different people are different. Everyone's unique brain is different. And it's a matter of finding out, hey, what really works to, uh, to motivate you? What I personally have been doing is I have three days a week where I do a more intensive personal training trainer schedule just to make sure I achieve my weekly goal. And then every day at the same time, I try and just do a single level, try and build that streak and just kind of keep the habit of keeping some brain training in. Great question. Yeah. And great answer. And that actually makes a good segue into our next question, which came in from Ken. Uh, when training, is it better to focus on one area or exercise, or is it better to go with the daily recommendation from the personal trainer? Uh, you know, it depends a little bit on where you are in your brain training journey. You know, if you're starting out with Brain HQ, I really recommend using the personal trainer for those longer brain training sessions. 
Um, and we make that recommendation because the personal trainer is going to walk you through a selection of exercises. It's really going to adaptively figure out what are the areas that um, you have the most opportunity to grow on. It's going to bring back things that you need to work on. And that's very you know, good for your brain. Once you get more comfortable with Brain HQ, if you feel like, hey, I basically know how to do these exercises, I'm starting to have exercises that are favorites and exercises that are maybe not favorites, you know, it's very reasonable at that point to move those training sessions to picking out individual exercises. Now, it's generally true that um, we usually wouldn't recommend obsessing over a single exercise. Um, although there are certainly studies that have looked at individual exercises and shown great results. But we usually like to recommend that people do small groups of exercises that complement each other. So pick one or two or three of the exercises in a given domain, like the speed exercises or the memory exercises. And if you wanna pick individual exercises, work within that. And then really focus on opening up those stages, getting to that bronze medal and then that silver medal to make sure that you're really training and improving your skills. All right, great answer, Henry. Um, we have a couple of people have asked this, namely Chris and Yasmin were the first ones to jump on it, but they were asking, uh, in terms of brain health, does it matter whether I do Brain HQ on my phone or is it better to do it on a computer? You know, that's also a great question. And, um, you know, there's two things to think about there. The first is that, um, hey, the most important thing about doing Brain HQ or, or frankly, anything that's exercise is that you do it at all. So, you know, the reason we made Brain HQ available on the web and on tablets and on phones and on Apple devices and on Android devices is that, uh, hey, any minute you spend during training is a good minute for your brain. And so if you have it on your phone and you find, you know, maybe you're uh, parked your car and you're waiting for 15 minutes to, you know, pick someone up, how great is it to just pick out your phone and do just one level in brain training and Brain HQ and keep your streak going? Um, so in that sense, the best brain training device is the one that helps you train the most, I guess I would put it that way. Um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, on the computer, one nice thing about it is you get a bigger screen and a lot of the exercises involve peripheral vision, things like double decision or Hawkeye. And it's nice to have a bigger screen and really be able to make sure that those targets that you're working on are way out in your peripheral vision. Um, and so that's a, you know, a nice plus of training on a laptop or a big screen, but I would never want anyone to say, well, I couldn't get to my computer today, so I couldn't do any Brain HQ, right? It's certainly better to use your tablet, use your phone, and, uh, and get those levels in. And in fact, when we were building some of these exercises on the phone for the first time, when we, for example, I remember right now, the first time I used double decision on my phone, I thought it would be easy, right? Because all of the uh, peripheral targets, those Route 66 signs would be right in close to the center of my vision. But because Brain HQ is adaptive, it just gets faster and it's gonna make it demanding as you know, Stephanie, <laughs> no matter uh, how good you may think you are. And in that sense, training on the phone is gonna push you to your limits exactly the way training on your laptop does. So, you know, to sum up, use the device that you find most convenient because what's important is doing Brain HQ as opposed to not doing Brain HQ. Um, so thanks. Yeah, uh, I think that's perfectly well said. Uh, I used to be a hobby photographer and, you know, the best camera is the one that you always have on you. <laughs> that's exactly um, so right. sort of the same, sort of the same uh, feeling with that as well. Yep. Um, Yasmin also asked another question that uh, we heard from a couple of other people as well. Um, is it better to train at specific times of the day, uh, like are mornings better than evenings? And should you train at the same time every day? Uh, like train, uh, if we're going to train in mornings, be morning, have it be mornings consistently, for example. Yep. You know, the answer to that is uh, you should look at your own personal rhythms of the day and get a sense of, hey, when's the time that I either feel the sharpest or I feel like I, I, I need a pick me up. Um, and different people are different on that front. For example, you know, uh, I like to do my brain training first thing in the morning. I like to do it before I dive into work. Um, because that's the time where I feel like I've woken up, my brain is getting going, but a bit of extra dopamine from the exercises, a bit of extra acetylcholine from the attention really helps get my day going. Um, but other people are different, right? Some people feel like they are sharpest and want a little push right at the end of the day, right? Maybe before they head to dinner. So again, I'm going to keep coming back to this theme. Different brains are different. Everyone has a unique brain. You should think about yourself and when you are sharpest or in need of that push. 
Now, that being said, um, you know, I think one of the points of the questions, and it was a great one, is, hey, should I train the same time every day or should I mix it up? You know, my observation from talking to a lot of Brain HQ users is that people who pick the same time, uh, whether it's three days a week or whether it's seven days a week, those are the people who train most successfully. And that's because that same time every day helps them build that schedule and that rhythm. You know, if you know that 9.30 a.m. is Brain HQ time, whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or seven days a week, you know, you are much more likely to sit down and do those brain training levels. Whereas if uh, brain training time is 2 p.m. on Monday and 5 p.m. on Thursday and 7 a.m. on Saturday, you're just not very likely to adhere to that schedule. So a lot of this recommendations are really gonna come back to what does it take for you to set up a, a, a rhythmic repeatable schedule that you can stick to? And what we see over and over again is that people who stick that same time every day are the ones who succeed the most. That's not because the brain is magically ready at 8.30 a.m. for brain training, but it's because it's easier to set up a schedule that gives your brain the benefits of Brain HQ if you set it up for the same time every day. Now, that being said, there are a few situations I'd say that we wouldn't recommend. I remember when we first were testing Brain HQ, we had a wonderful beta tester, and I remember talking to him, and he's, I asked him, well, what time of day do you do Brain HQ? And he said, oh, I like to do it in the evening. You know, I sit down with a glass of scotch, and I have the news on, and I do Brain HQ. And I can say, Stephanie, that's that's probably not a recommended way to do Brain HQ. Don't have the TV on while you're doing brain training. You're supposed to be focusing on Brain HQ. And maybe save that glass of scotch for a reward after you've finished your training. I, I don't think anyone should be drinking it while they're doing their brain training. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, great answer, Henry. Um, all right, so we have another question from Bill. Uh, Bill has asked, uh, what's uh, why is the emphasis on three or, training for three or four days consecutively versus three or four days uh, not consecutively? Uh, what's the difference in benefits there? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, again, different schedules can work for different people. We certainly see people who are training every single day and they're getting great benefits. We see people who are training other day, every other day, but train a little bit more each time and get great benefits. Um, you know, uh, so I, I don't think I'm here to pick a winner and a loser across those two. You know, Stephanie, I took the question as, um, hey, what's maybe the difference between training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then taking the rest of the week off versus training, let's say, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Both ways, I'm training three days a week, but one way they're all kind of compressed together and one way they're a bit more spread out. Yeah, that's the way that I'm interpreting it as well. Okay. All right. Uh, well, in general, I would personally recommend that a person do it more. If you're going to pick between the two, um, uh, hmm, that's a great question. Yeah, I would generally lean towards every other day um, because that gives the brain a little bit more time for sleeping and consolidating learning. But, you know, I'm thinking about the question and thinking about times where, you know, sometimes mass practice is a little bit better. You know, Stephanie, I don't think I have a very strong recommendation between those two options. Um, again, I'm going to lean towards, you know, looking at your schedule and thinking really, hey, which is the one I'm more likely to be able to stick to? And that's going to be the one that um, that is better for you. There's certainly nothing wrong with training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then taking a few days off, as long as you make sure that next week you, you pick back up again. Um, you know, one analogy I might draw is, you know, probably some people on the line today who took music lessons as a kid. And if you think about the recommendations that your music teacher or maybe your parents gave you for practicing, if you were, I don't know, learning any instrument, maybe you took piano lessons. Um, you know, a lot of those recommendations are the same for using Brain HQ. And, and generally, music teachers like to see a pretty regular pattern of practice rather than quite so much bunching it up. Um, but if your schedule works and you want to bunch it up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then make sure you get back to it next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, stick to it and, and you're going to get good results. All right. Sounds good, Henry. Um, so our next question here, uh, we had a couple of people chime in with this one, uh, but Coney and Laura were the first ones to ask, um, how do you go about defining a level? Like what are sort of the parameters? Like what makes a level different from a stage? Oh, that's a great question. And, you know, this, this sometimes can be a little bit confusing in Brain HQ. Um, I think I'm going to share my screen again, if you don't mind, so we can take a look at, um, at, uh, at my Brain HQ window, if I can find it here. 
So, uh, you know, what is a level? I think is really the question, Stephanie. Does that sound yeah. right to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Brain HQ is composed of exercises and I'll click on this explore all, you can see my screen, right, Stephanie? Yes, I can. Great, I'm gonna click on explore all exercises. We think about Brain HQ as kind of having this organization. There's six main areas. There's attention, brain speed, memory, people skills, intelligence, by which we really mean decision-making, and then navigation. Each of these areas has individual exercises, as you know. So um, uh, I'll go back to visual sweeps for a moment, which we looked at. The visual sweeps exercise is composed of many, many levels. And each of those levels has something slightly different about it. For example, the sweeps might be red or green or orange, or they might be up and down, vertical, or they might be horizontal. Um, and so each of these squares represents a different level of visual sweeps that's different in that subtle way. Now we train across all these levels, all these colors, all these orientations, because we want to give comprehensive brain training, we have to cover everything. So that's really what a level is. We organize the levels into stages, which are small groups of levels that share some properties. So here's stage one, you can see there's four levels in stage one. Here's stage two, it's a little bit bigger, there's eight levels and so forth and so on. So you can think about it as, again, as a hierarchy. There's a domain like speed, an exercise like visual sweeps. Visual sweeps is broken into a several different stages and each stage has many levels in it. If you're using the personal trainer, you don't necessarily need to see this or even worry about it because if you use the personal trainer, it's gonna pick an exercise and a level for you. So for example, it wants me to do this optic flow exercise. It's the seventh level of that series. I don't need to worry about that too much because Brain HQ has picked that level for me. Actually, Henry, that brings us to another great question is, uh, can you talk a little bit about how the personal trainer goes and picks out exercises? Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. So um, the great part about the personal trainer is, uh, you know, we designed it to make it very easy. You don't have to be a brain scientist. You don't even have to be an expert at using Brain HQ. You know, you can click the personal trainer. And like I said, Brain HQ is going to pick out the exercises and the levels for you. But how does that do that? OK, well, you might want to sort of understand it under the hood a little bit more. And, and here's what it does. So each time you start the personal trainer, uh, the brain each, uh, sorry, each time you start the personal trainer, it looks back at your complete history of your brain training. Uh, and it knows every exercise you've done. It knows each level you've done within each exercise. And on each level, it knows how well you did, right? Maybe you got one star, you could definitely improve. Maybe you get five stars, probably don't need to work on that one anymore. So it then looks across those exercises and it picks out ones that are either new, like here, it wants to give me the seventh level of optic flow, which I've never received before. And it tries to balance that with bringing me back to some levels that I can do better on, like this recognition uh, exercise where apparently I've only gotten one or two stars and I need to do better on it. So it tries to do, do a balance of introducing new exercises as well as bringing back levels that you haven't done before. Uh, it typically operates on a set of exercises. So for example, you can see here that across all of this, it's asking me to do optic flow and recognition and true north and in the know and here, here and rhythm recall. And it's true that the personal trainer will focus on a group of exercises, typically about six for a period of time. And then eventually it will just get rid of one exercise to introduce a new exercise to kind of keep things fresh over time. Um, so that's the core of how the personal trainer works. I think there's a support article that we could probably point people to that gets into even more depth. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we have a whole section in the uh, on the support site dedicated solely to the personal trainer. And I think there's seven or eight articles in there. So, yeah, um, you know, Stephanie, maybe I'll say one or two more words about it now that I yeah. think about what people commonly ask. One question that people commonly ask is, hey, I'm getting the same exercise over and over again. Why is that? Well, there's, there's two reasons. There's two things that can be happening. First of all, like I said, the personal trainer tends to operate in a group of about six exercises. So it's true that for the next few days, as I start the personal trainer, I'm generally going to see these exercises because that's what Brain HQ wants me to focus on. Now, in some cases, it'll give me a new level in the exercise. And in some case, it'll bring me back to a level where I can do better. But it's bringing back those same exercises because, you know, Brain HQ is about um, skill acquisition and practice and performance. Um, you know, if you did a new exercise every day, 
I mean, that might be fun. I guess you'd get to see a lot of exercises, but I, I don't know if you'd really improve at any one of them, right? Uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, taking the, uh, taking the butter and spreading it out over the toast a little bit too thin. Uh, you need to come back to the exercises so your brain really gets that intensive practice in, in order to improve on them. That being said, eventually you've practiced a bunch and Brain HQ will introduce a new exercise for you. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the personal trainer programming new exercises for you, um, can you talk a little bit about what it means when you keep seeing the same uh, couple of exercises pop up in your personal trainer rotation? Yeah, I'll go back to my personal trainer here. So, um, you know, as I said, the personal trainer tends to operate on a group of about six exercises. So I could finish this personal trainer session today and I'll have done the seventh level of octave flow and I've repeated this recognition level and I've done the 10th level of true north and so on forth and so on. And when I come back to it tomorrow, I'm probably gonna see mostly these same exercises, but it might have then brought me onto the eighth level of optic flow. And maybe I've finally mastered this level of recognition that I've been beating my head against the wall and it will say, okay, it's time to go on to the fifth level of recognition. So in that sense, it's gonna bring the exercises back because well, in order to improve on them, you have to repeat the same exercises, but it will be trying to introduce new levels in the exercise for you. And then on a more infrequent basis, maybe every, if you're training intensively, maybe every two weeks or so, it will say, okay, enough of let's say optic flow. I wanna bring in a new exercise. Maybe it's time for you to start trying mind bender. So it's absolutely true that when you look at the personal trainer, you know, from day to day, you're going to see the same group of exercises and it will change maybe every uh, week or two if you're training intensively. But what you might look for then is, hey, am I seeing new levels like this? Every time you see something like seventh level or 10th level, that means the personal trainer is bringing a brand new level to you that you've never done before. And you can check on this a bit more, you know, you're doing this in the personal trainer, but all of your progress does show up on these individual exercises. So here, let's just take a quick look for a moment, Stephanie, for example, it wants me to, um, you know, let's look at optic flow, for example, where it wants me to go on to the seventh level. Uh, let's take a look at optic flow as an exercise here. I pick the exercises and I scroll down to navigation and let's take a look at optic flow. And let's take a look at my individual stages. Well, you can see exactly that. I've done my first six stage, my first, in the first stage, I've done the first six levels and hey, I'm doing all right here, Stephanie, I guess, aren't I? Yeah, um, I would say so. <laughs> Five stars across the board. Well, I got one more to go there, but. Uh, oh, almost. <laughs> but stage two, I haven't do any yet. Well, you'll notice this is the seventh level in optic flow. And you'll remember that my personal trainer is bringing the seventh level to me. So in that sense, the personal trainer is asking me to keep focus on the optic flow exercise, but it wants to introduce me now to the seventh level. So I'm continuing to make my progress through all of these brain training levels. Make sense? Yep, makes sense to me. Um, all right, so we have a couple of people um, that have asked about difficulty settings in the uh, for the personal trainer on the profile page. I was wondering if you could demo that and talk a little bit about the difference between yeah. breadth and depth, and then what the difficulty actually means. That's a really great question. And um, so let's scroll down. You can select your profile. And then for those of you uh, who are asking about this question, um, you can scroll down to trainer settings right down here towards the bottom. And what this does is it sets up your trainer. And there's three settings that are important. One of which is your choice of focus. The next is your training strategy. And the next is your difficulty. The focus is actually the easiest one. If you click on your focus here, it's going to take you to a large list of focuses. And what a focus does is it means that the personal trainer is only going to pick certain exercises. Now, most people are on this optimized schedule, which means the personal trainer can pick any exercise it thinks is right for you. But you might want to focus on something in particular. Some people, for example, only want the brain speed exercises. And if you click on focus on brain speed, it's only going to give you speed exercises. A really common example is um, focus on auditory processing. In this case, Brain HQ is only going to give you the exercises that involve your hearing. And a lot of people do that because they want to sharpen their hearing in some way, shape, or form. So that's a focus. You can change that um, as you like. Let's go back to my profile. The next two settings control how often the personal trainer repeats a level. I'm going to cover difficulty first. The difficulty setting, you can see easy, medium, hard, and expert. This corresponds to 
how many stars do you have to earn when you do a level in order for Brain HQ to decide, well, you're good at that level. You don't need to see it again. Now, remember, there's a lot of exercises and a lot of levels in Brain HQ. We obviously don't want to keep bringing you to the same level if you've demonstrated you're pretty good at it already. But what does pretty good mean? Well, it means different things for different people. If you're a pro athlete or you're working in the United States Special Forces, you know, you're probably going to set your difficulty level to expert. What that means is Brain HQ is going to keep bringing you back a repeated level until you get four or five stars on it, um, really almost five in this case. So you need to show Brain HQ you can really nail that level before it retires that level and brings on a new one. Now, that's pretty ambitious for most of us. If you set your difficulty at medium, what that means is that Brain HQ is going to bring a level back to you until you get at least about a three-star performance on it. Now that means for most of us, we'll hit that three star performance and then Brain HQ will set that level, uh, the personal trainer will set that level aside and it'll bring the next level of the exercise onto us. So it's uh, good to set your uh, levels at easy, medium, or maybe hard if you want to make progress through the levels. You want to see new variations of the brain training exercise and not feel like you're stuck on seeing exactly the same level over and over again. On the other hand, if you're looking to really you know, sharpen your performance to the maximum possible, you're looking for absolutely elite performance, then put it on harder expert. Brain HQ will bring those same levels back to you more frequently because it's trying to drive you to really excel at them. So that's the difficulty setting. The training strategy uh, uh, works a little bit differently. So as you know, Brain HQ has got 29 exercises in it. And as you heard me say, it doesn't give you all 29 every day. It doesn't even pick from all 29 every day. If it did that, you wouldn't train intensively on any one exercise to get any benefits. Instead, as you might remember me mentioning, you know, Brain HQ focuses on about six exercises at a time. The training strategy setting to, uh, tells the personal trainer, how often do I want to get rid of one of those six exercises and bring on a new one? So if you set it to the breadth setting here, it's going to pretty rapidly get rid of an exercise and move on to a new one. You'll see new exercises much more frequently if you set to the breadth setting. On the other hand, if you set to the depth setting, You'll stay with the same six exercises for longer, but you'll push deeper into those various different levels that you saw. And you know that can be a way to train your brain a little bit more intensively. Now, for most people, the right setting, frankly, is right here in the middle. I'd recommend to most people leave the training strategy in the middle, but let's make sure your difficulty is set up right. If you're finding that you know when you open up the personal trainer, all it says is repeated levels, your difficulty level is probably set a bit too hard. Brain HQ keeps bringing you back to those repeated levels to try and get you to three stars or four stars and five stars. And if that's just not where you can get to with your brain right now, well, I don't think you want to repeat those levels over and over again forever. Um, you know, call us up. Stephanie and her team be happy to help you. You know, let's set that difficulty level a little bit lower because we want you to make progress through the different levels as opposed to just getting stuck because your difficulty level is set too high. That makes sense, Stephanie. Something else I should follow up on there, do you think? Uh, no, I think that just about covers it. Um, all right, let's go on to another question here. So I know we had talked okay. about um, repeating exercises in the personal trainer, um, but Nancy was asking, you know, I've also heard that most benefits come from learning new things, not repeating the same tasks over and over. Uh, does it help to keep changing the games we play? Well, you're absolutely right in general, uh, and that's a great observation. You know, brain change, new learning comes from working on something that's new. Um, and, you know, often when people ask me, hey, are crosswords good for the brain? You know, I have to give them slightly bad news, which is, um, you know, there just haven't been very good clinical trials of crossword puzzles. And people like to do them. It feels like it keeps your brain busy. But, you know, if you look at what you do, it's kind of the same thing over and over again. You're not really driving new learning. If you love crossword puzzles, good, you should do them. That's wonderful. People should do things that they love. But from a brain training perspective, <clears throat> you probably want to pick something that's going to drive some new learning, whether it's different kinds of puzzles or jigsaw puzzles or some new board games. So with regard to Brain HQ, you know, you're right. You do want to keep doing new things. Um, but that does have to be balanced against practice. Uh, you know, imagine if you were a musician and uh, the first day you learned the flute for a little bit. And then the second day you're like, I'll try some piano. And the third day you're like, mm, how about bongo drums? 
very nice. You're probably having fun learning a lot of new things, but you're not really improving your skills at any one of those. So the personal trainer is really designed to try and make that balance. It keeps you coming back to exercises. It'll bring back individual levels where it thinks you can do better, but eventually it does move you on to new exercises and new levels. So in that sense, the science team here has tried to tweak the personal trainer settings for that kind of optimum balance of keeping things fresh with new things. But the reality of any kind of learning, whether you're learning music or a new sport or, a, you know, a new language is hey, you have to practice, right? You have to hit those things and have a certain performance level and practice and get to a different performance level. So a certain amount of repetition is exactly required. And again, that's what the personal trainer is trying to do is balance that need for repetition with the need for novelty in that way. Did that, that answer the question, do you think, or at least speak to it, Stephanie? I think it did. Um, all right. So it's a great I have, question. Yeah, it's a fantastic question. Um, so I have uh, a bit of a coaching moment available for you now, Henry. All right. Um, Anonymous had written into us and asked um, how to best avoid becoming discouraged when you don't score high enough and if you end up replaying the same exercises over and over. Yeah, that is a great question. And, um, you know, we don't want anyone to be discouraged with Brain HQ. And, and our design team has done a lot of work to make the feedback that you get, like you're seeing in these progress tiles, encouraging about, about change and about growth. That being said, you know, I understand where a person's coming from, right? I think all of us have uh, maybe hit a level in the personal trainer where like this recognition level, this, this may be the death of me, right? I'm really, really struggling. I've repeated it over and over again. Um, and, and I guess what I'd say is two things. You know, first of all, um, I'd encourage everyone to think carefully around, hey, what is a goal for my brain training that's right for me? Um, and what's a goal that I can achieve? And that's why I think the first goal that anyone should focus on is, well, hey, focus each week on setting a goal for how many levels you want to achieve and then working to just achieve those levels. Again, think of it like exercise. You know, our goal in physical exercise is not that all of us are gonna run a marathon or we're all gonna, you know, bench press 300 pounds. Our goal for most of us with exercise is, hey, let's just do it, right? Let's just get in the habit of doing it and that's gonna be good for us. That's why everyone's first goal and people should be happy and proud when they achieve that goal is, hey, close your levels each week and do that week after week for a while. That's a great goal. If you're achieving that, you are doing a fantastic job with Brain HQ. If you're using the personal trainer, you're getting what scientists think you know, your brain needs in order to improve its performance. I think sometimes people get stuck on a goal that's, you know, just not a helpful goal. Like I'm 52 years old, Stephanie. I'm probably not going to run a five minute mile. You know, if I, if I were engaged in physical exercise and my goal was to run a five minute mile, uh, you know, it would be a very challenging goal. I might spend a lot of time feeling kind of down about it. So I would encourage people to pick a goal that's, you know, in line with how they're training and what they can work on, whether it's a level goal like this, whether it's completing the weekly challenge, whether it's picking an exercise uh, and getting to a bronze medal in a lot of the stages. Um, I haven't talked that much about performance per se today. We're probably going to have another office hours on performance. But I think sometimes people think, um, you know, I should be able to get to the 90th percentile in, uh, in speed. And I'm only getting to the 65th or the 40th. And I feel bad about that. And I would really encourage people to not have that specific goal. Um, there are a lot of people who are using Brain HQ. Again, like I said, we have athletes, we have military forces members, all kinds of people. And it's, it's, it's not a good goal to say really numerically, hey, I want to be at the 90th percentile or the 80th percentile. It's better to say I want to train regularly. And it's better to look at the exercises and say, well, here's an exercise I really like. Let me shoot for a bronze medal on that. Now, very tactically, sometimes this question comes because a person's in the personal trainer and they're just sick of this repeated level. Well, a couple of things you can do. First of all, uh, I'll give you a tip. Not many people know this, but it's true. You don't actually have to do it. Um, in the personal trainer, it wants me to do uh, target tracker next. If I don't want to do target tracker next, I can still use the personal trainer. I can just go ahead and click on optic flow and it'll just skip me ahead to optic flow. So if you have an exercise or a level where you're just stuck on, it's making you feel bad because you're not getting any better at it, um, just skip it for a couple of days or skip it for a while. And if you need any more help with setting yourself up to skip it for a long time, you know, give Stephanie and her team a, a call or an email at support and they can help you configure that. Now, 
you know, as a scientist, do I want people to skip exercises forever? You know, no, the exercises are there for a reason. They're good for you. But I understand the frustration and I don't want anyone to feel down about their performance in Brain HQ. I want you to focus on completing your levels each week, earning stars, doing the challenge and feel good about what you've accomplished in that way. It's a great question and such an important one for all of us in terms of maintaining our motivation for something that's healthy for us. All right. Uh, speaking of uh, taking a break, actually, um, we have a couple of questions where people uh, maybe started Brain HQ a long time ago, and then they are coming back to Brain HQ after that break. Is it better to pick up where they had left off, or should they start over from the beginning? Um, you know, pretty frequently, it's good to quote, start over for the beginning. And, you know, right now, just to say that out loud, you know, just send us a note at support at brainhq.com. You know, we can kind of reset brainhq for you. So you started from the beginning. There, there's not a way to do that yourself right now from the profile. Um, but just drop us a note, you know, we're here to help. <clears throat> we can uh, sort of put all your progress in the past. And then when you start the exercises, they might start a little bit easier for you and you get on the right hook. Um, you know, I've done brain HQ for a while. And, and there are absolutely times where I've taken a break and I've come back and I'm like, man, uh, my brain was really fast two months ago and this is a little overwhelming right now. Uh, and it can be nice just to get that reset. You know, getting the reset in Brain HQ, it doesn't erase the benefits your brain got from Brain HQ. You already have that in your brain. It just makes it easier to kind of get back on the horse and keep going. So if that's where you are, just send us a note at support of Brain HQ and Stephanie and her team will look after you. It's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So it is about 156 here. So I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. So I'm going to try and uh, get questions that uh, a lot of people were asking. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. So going back to scheduling, I know we had already addressed, you know, whether it's better to do training in the morning or in the evening, but what yeah. if you split up that training across, uh, across a whole day? So you do 15 minutes in the morning and then 15 minutes in the afternoon. Is there any sort of uh, oh, issue that, with that, that is a really great question. Um, we absolutely recommend that for people who are trying to get to their weekly goal. So let's say your goal is 90 minutes a week, but you, um, and so you want to train three times a week for 30 minutes each session, but you're in a situation where, you know, training for that full 30 minutes is just very challenging for you for whatever reason. Um, we absolutely recommend that people break it up, you know, two 15 minute sessions in a day, three 10 minute sessions in a day. You know, you can use the personal trainer, you know, just do a, an exercise for a couple of levels. And then, hey, if you're feeling fatigued, your brain's feeling worn out, you feel like your attention just really, you know, needs a break, step aside. You haven't lost any progress. When you come back to the personal trainer, it'll just pick up where you left off and you'll complete those levels. Now, in general, we'd like people to work towards being able to complete that 30 minute session in one session. Um, in one kind of, you know, run like that. Uh, but hey, lots of people, that's just not where their brain is. And Brain HQ is here to help every brain get better and sharper. So if you've got a brain that needs a break after 10 or 15 minutes, take that break and finish up your session later on in the day. Uh, I've been the principal investigator on a lot of research studies, and we make that recommendation in every single research study, which is to say, um, we want you to finish the levels. If you feel like you need a break and then come back towards it at the end of the day, you should do it because what's important is finishing your levels. Great question. I'm really glad that came up, Stephanie. Yeah. And one final question. A lot of people are asking about brain AQ. What is it? How is it measured? Um, is it a useful metric for tracking progress over time? Uh, so I think this is going to be our final question for now. Uh, so uh, if you could talk about that. Uh, just for well, a I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure we have an office hours coming up in the next little while, Stephanie, where we're going to talk in detail about tracking um, progress uh, in particular and performance. You know, today's session, we really focused on setting your goals and achieving your goals, which is really about your levels per week and, and looking at those individual exercises in your medals. I think we have a whole session coming up where we're going to talk about other ways to think about progress progress, including brain AQ. What I'll say very briefly about it, because, uh, you know, I don't want to punt on it entirely, mm. is, you know, brain AQ is meant to be a way to help you achieve your weekly goals. And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, he, he, here's my session, for example, you can see that um, here's my calendar, you can see that here's a period of time where I trained at least a little bit almost every day, I think I actually had a 30 or 40 day streak going here at one point. And as you train each day, you know, you earn a few brain AQ points. And there's a lot of math, Stephanie, but you know, in the gist of it is, is that each new level you do earns you some brain AQ points. And each 
you know, each star that you earn in a level earns you some brain AQ points. So you get credit for doing new levels and you get credit for improving your performance on existing levels. And that makes this number goes up. And then the way the math works is it wears off over time, right? Following a lot of what we know about brain science and learning. And so the idea with brain AQ is to give people a visual tool to say, okay, when have I worn off enough that I really need to get back to this? Because I recognize that people take breaks. So here you can see, I got really busy with some things in my family at work. I wasn't doing much brain training and I could look at my brain AQ and I could say, okay, you know, this has really fallen a fair amount, Henry. You know, it's time to get back on the horse and train intensively and boost it back up. So you can think of it as a visual representation about how intensely you've been training. And I think what all all of us should be shooting for is to have it go up at the beginning because typically we train intensively at the beginning and then you know stay constant or not fall over time um, and that's that's really what it's meant to serve to help you almost translate your visual calendar into a graph that should generally be staying steady if you're training regularly or going up if you're training regularly so that's what a person should be shooting for it's more like a fuel gauge right uh, in the sense of um, you know how much have you put into your brain as a result of brain hq training and then for people who take a break for a while as almost everyone does okay, the fuel gauge is starting to run a little low now. I need to put some gas back in the tank and work on Brain HQ. But we'll talk a lot more about this, I think, in one of our next office hours. And then yeah. that sense, it's a great question to close on. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So I think we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap up this webinar today, this office hours presentation. Um, so just a couple of notes for everybody. Uh, I have put a couple of links in the chat for you. Uh, I have our support site, our support email address, I have our YouTube channel, and I also have a uh, article uh, within our support site that will allow you to register for our other webinars in this series and also in our Brain Academy series. Um, so our next webinar um, is going to be uh, a Brain Health Academy uh, a webinar, excuse me, and that's going to be taking place in February. Uh, we are actually going to be talking about COVID and the brain. Um, yes. So this is a very interesting and relevant topic right now for all of us, I am sure. Um, so go to that link in the chat and uh, be sure to register for that when you have a moment. Uh, we'll also send you a follow-up email in a couple of days and then be sure to include that link as well. Um, other than that, thank you all so much for attending. Uh, Henry, do you want to say a few closing words? Yeah, thanks to everyone for coming. The response to these office hours are overwhelming. I, I know we didn't quite get to every question, um, so we'll be following up by email uh, where we can. Uh, if you don't hear from us, just ping us again in a, in a few days. Make sure we get the question. And hey, right after this webinar, open up Brain HQ and uh, go to your uh, profile, check out your weekly goal, go to your reminders, set up some reminders that work from your schedule. I want every single person who's listening to me to do this. It's the most important thing you can do to get the most out of Brain HQ. And then start working on those weekly goals, work on building that streak. And uh, with that, happy brain training. Thanks to everyone for coming. Really just so exciting to hear from so many people. And I look forward to uh, the next one. Thanks, Stephanie. Yep, You've been yeah. a wonderful co-host. Thanks for all your help. Oh, thanks, Henry. Appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.